Uh, it is my very special pleasure. Hi. Just settle down, people. There's too much coffee this morning, I think. Um, my very uh, extreme pleasure to introduce a fellow New Zealander uh, to speak to you all this morning. Uh, Mickey Willardin is uh, a very good friend, but also part of the founding group of the Ancestral Health Society of New Zealand, uh, under the uh, inspiration of Brent and his team, uh, we've decided to set up our own, present, uh, our own society down in our little corner of the world. Um, as you'll be very well aware, these things don't kind of happen on the back of one person or, or two people. Uh, you need a very good team in behind you. Mickey has kindly uh, stepped forward and she's sort of one of our key members uh, helping us out. And uh, I think just about all the Kiwis that we've dragged over here uh, are involved in some way or another. Um, so I'll leave you in the very capable hands of Mickey as she talks about her experiences with Primal Pacific and uh, our experiences down in New Zealand trying to um, get this sort of ancestral paradigm underway. Mickey. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, good morning, everyone. And before I go through my presentation, I'd just like to go through a few acknowledgements um, of the people who made our research possible. So first, uh, Obviously, the participants in the Primal Pacific study, which were Pacific employees of Middlemore Hospital, uh, which is a large hospital, one of the uh, three hospitals in Auckland, New Zealand, where we are based. Uh, also, our uh, Faculty of Health and Environmental Sciences for the research grant, which uh, enabled us to conduct the research. and resources provided by County's Manukau District Health Board, which is the health board where the uh, hospital, uh, which, ad which is yeah, part of the, the hospital is part of the system of. Um, the Human Potential Centre, which is our research group, uh, who provided a lot of the resources and um, managing of the project. And finally, that this research was uh, approved by the AUT University uh, Ethics Committee. Um, so, like many indigenous populations, if you look back in the literature uh, about references to people in the Pacific Islands, uh, you'll see comments such as this, as illustrated by Weston A. Price, which is just up in my slide there and I won't read out. But uh, physical, uh, sorry, Pacific populations were revered for their physical health, their physical attributes, their strength, and their agility, uh, by navigators and, uh, I guess, anthropologists alike. However, this is what modern-day prowess really looks like now. So, Pacific population in New Zealand uh, makes up about 7.5% of our New Zealand population, and uh, Pacific nations uh, are not limited to, but are predominantly Samoan, Tongan, Nuean, Cook Island, and two thirds of those people reside in the Auckland area, which, as I mentioned, is where I'm from. However, they are disproportionately represented in our health statistics. So 59% and 64% of male and female Pacific people are obese, and that's compared to 28 and 32 percent, respectively, of New Zealand European. The diabetes rates are three times greater in Pacific people, and there is three and a half times the amount of chronic kidney disease in Pacific people uh, compared to the general population. Cardiovascular disease is four times greater in Pacific people, and there is one and a half times the mortality from ischemic heart disease. And finally, life expectancy is four years lower in Pacific people. And like other populations around the world, they are disproportionately represented in our lower socioeconomic status statistics also. So there is a higher rate of food insecurity. So there's limited access to quality food. There are higher rates of unemployment. There are lower rates of literacy and also lower rates of uh, access to health services as well. 
And typically, as you know, these things do come hand in hand. With the Pacific people, their culture is centered around family, faith, and music, and every celebration is punctuated by a feast, and a large feast. However, you'll probably agree with me that the traditional uh, food choices of Pacific people are likely not the contributing factor to their poor health outcomes. Because their traditional diet is centered around the types of foods that we've been hearing about and discussing over the last few days. Traditional Pacific foods are abundant fresh fruit, tropical fruit, vegetables, fresh meat and seafood, and starchy tubers such as taro and plantains and uh, coconut as well. Of course, though, both in New Zealand and uh, back in the Pacific Islands, uh, this traditional diet is, I guess, overlaid with that standard westernized diet. So foods which are nutrient poor, energy dense, easily accessible, convenient, are foods much as we find um, everywhere else in the world. And it is this combination of a food-based culture and the standard westernized diet, which is a large contributor to the health problems that I was describing earlier. Now, because of this, there are a lot of, there are a number of organizations which are set up to try and help promote uh, healthy physical activity patterns and healthy eating within these at-risk groups. And one such group uh, is the Pacific Health Development Team, which sits inside County's uh, Middlemore Hospital and County's Manukau District Health Board. Now, the Pacific Health Development Team are responsible for administering the Lotta Moi program. And this is a church-based program which, which, role, which promotes healthy eating and physical activity components um, within the Pacific churches around the Auckland area. And while Lotto Moi is well received by the participants, it has made little traction with regards to improving the health outcomes of the Pacific people. And therefore, the PhD team approached us to try and find a different way to, to promote healthy eating uh, in such a way that would actually make a difference to those health outcomes. And that is how we developed the Primal Pacific program, which effectively, the Primal Pacific project wanted to test the effectiveness of a lower carbohydrate, higher fat, whole food diet that was culturally appropriate to Pacific people compared to New Zealand best practice recommendations for weight loss. So the two diet groups, and I'll explain the design of the study um, in a moment, uh, the two diet groups that we looked at were these best practice recommendations and our Primal Pacific plan. And you'll likely be familiar with at least the best practice recommendations, which was based on a calorie restricted diet uh, that was low in fat, moderate in protein, and moderate in carbohydrate intake. And that is, as I'm sure you're aware, the conventional approach to weight loss and improved health outcomes, the, which the program Lotto Moy is, is predominantly based on in, in their health messages. Our Primal Pacific plan was a much more whole food approach to diet. So it uh, was carbohydrate restricted at 100 grams or below, and those carbohydrate choices were based on those traditional based uh, Pacific uh, tubers of taro, but also kumra or sweet potato, potato, and uh, fruit as well. 
as I said, it's minimally processed, and the type of fat that we promoted was what well, was higher in fat, but also the naturally occurring fats, such as coconut oil, coconut cream, and things like that. So people in our primal Pacific group were encouraged to incorporate dishes which they may have traditionally eaten, such as palasami, which is coconut cream, in uh, uh, baked in taro leaves, and also otter, which is fresh fruit, oh sorry, fresh fish, in a coconut um, cream base. The diet trial itself lasted for eight weeks, and we had a follow-up period of 12 weeks. At baseline, we collected uh, dietary information to base our calorie restriction on for the best practice recommendation group, and also uh, physical activity information. I've just listed the measures there that we took at both baseline and at week eight as well, and they included blood lipid measures, body fat percentage measured by bioelectrical impedance. We looked at mood based on the profile of mood state scale, weight waste, uh, HbA1c, etc. And we started with 26 participants. We also had intensive one-on-one -on -one nutrition counselling at the start, so we provided them with really thorough uh, information on their dietary protocol. And we caught up with them every two weeks to do limited anthropometrical measures and also a mood scale and for that additional nutritional support. Throughout the eight-week period, we also had an 0800 number set up, which is, I believe, a 1800 number in the United States. So if ever there was a question about diet, we were at hand to provide dietary information. And then at week eight, we did the same baseline measures to see what effect the different dietary uh, protocols had on these health outcomes. There was no contact in between uh, week eight and week 20 because we wanted to see how the participants went uh, when they were uh, just left on their own. And then we followed up with a focus group. What I would love to be able to now tell you about is the amazing changes in health we saw from the participants of our primal Pacific protocol when compared to the best practice recommendations. However, some of you may be able to see that down at that right-hand side of my slide, I've got complete results for just five participants out of the 26 that started. So we had six participants drop out from weeks one to eight, and then we had a focus group with just six of the participants at the end of our overall uh, study period. The results we got were wildly unspectacular, actually. And so I figured there was no point in showing you slide after slide of these minimal changes uh, and uh, no difference in, in, in health outcomes when we compare what we have for those under the best practice recommendations for weight loss and also the Primal Pacific approach. I've got these as percentage changes from baseline to post-intervention. And you can see there the percent change in weight and body fat. There was minimal movement over weeks from week zero baseline to week eight, uh, but just minimal. And in fact, participants one and two on these slides were from the best practice recommendation group and participants three, four, and five we're from Primal Pacific. Likewise, if we look at blood pressure, there's very minimal difference with our changes in blood pressure, as you know, an independent risk factor for heart disease. And also um, weight and also insulin as well. Possibly the main result from this study is illustration that when you work with people who are not paying for your nutrition services, uh, 
it's really difficult to motivate these people. And actually, research with real people is incredibly challenging to administer and roll out and get buy-in, even when you've got the buy-in of those people uh, within that organisation to begin with, and key people in the organisation. When we ran our focus groups, we asked them about what the challenges were with regards to the dietary protocol. And I've, I've basically got them list, listed up there. Because food is such a, a massive part of Pacific culture, uh, there, were, there was always going to be these social gatherings. And as you know, dietary support or support for dietary uh, changes is, is necessary to enable them to um, happen. Now, due to our funding constraints and when we had to spend the money, we had to conduct this research in the latter part of last year, in the lead up to Christmas, actually. So the time of year also made it uh, challenging for our participants. Uh, the family didn't buy into the dietary uh, protocol for those undertaking, in fact, both, be both the best practice recommendations and our primal Pacific diet. Uh, and the time taken to prepare the food when you're, when you're advocating for a minimally processed diet was certainly a factor for some of the, our participants. And some of them really just didn't like the concept of a, a higher fat approach to diet. Uh, but you'll probably uh, appreciate that it wasn't that they didn't like it, but more likely that they didn't really trust it. Of course, those who did do the Primal Pacific diet actually really enjoyed the level of satiety they got from eating a higher fat diet, and some of them did enjoy the food. One of the aspects that we looked at and were interested in was the cost of our uh, Primal Pacific approach compared to a, a, just a typical diet, and in fact, this was a positive for our participants. So they, did, they noticed, if anything, um, that was a benefit of our approach. And equally, because we tried to encourage a more culturally kind of get, getting them back to eating some of those dishes that, that um, are traditional in their culture, some of them really did enjoy the food. So some of the uh, limitations of our, of our research was, um, as I said, the timing of when the study was conducted and also the design, so the Pacific Health Development Team um, thought it was more appropriate that they, that participants self-selected into which group they wanted to um, go into, and um, researchers in the audience would appreciate that that's not the best design for um, a study. Uh, however, it, it, was, it was one of those, uh, I guess, challenges of, of working with the group that we were working in with. Um, and also engagement of our participants as well. Obviously, if you end the study and you've got just complete results for five participants, there were also challenges there. However, the whole purpose of Primal Pacific was to test the feasibility of our Primal Pacific approach at improving health outcomes. And part of it was the, I guess, the accessibility and the acceptability of this approach because there is no point in conducting this type of research if the overall goal is not to somehow get it out into the community and help those most at need of improving their health outcomes. So we do have, um, in development, a larger trial underway uh, that does include a physical activity component as well. And equally, our whole food carbohydrate restricted approach uh, is going to be trialled in other groups as well. And those of you who were um, listening into Dr. Karen Zinn's research yesterday will be aware of our low carb kids trial that has got res uh, funding from our Health Research Council, which is um, quite a big deal for us in our Human Potential Centre in New Zealand. And I do actually have a um, a video which I would love to be able to show you as the Primal Pacific trial was uh, showcased on a Pacific television program um, that runs on our, um, on our free-to-air TV, but I have run out of time, uh, which is uh, a shame. So I may show a little bit. Um, so thank you, and I just need to pop out of my slides. Well, 
It's not only the exercise that will help keep you healthy, and to be honest, for me, it's about the food, honestly. That's the one area I really struggle with that's, with my, that's with my weight. That's for everyone. That's really. right. And often, you know, regarding diets, we're often told to keep the fat out of our diet. Yes, but could fat hold the key to weight loss? And I think that's what I've been telling people. Yep. Here's John Utanga with the latest on a new way of looking at food. Now I've put coconut cream and lemon on my apple and I'm happy as... Middlemore Hospital, South Auckland. It's like your whole body went into shock. It's almost like you have uh, withdrawal symptoms. And this group is giving some feedback. By lunchtime, that's when you started to get hungry again. The first thing I was scared of was, oh, what's my cholesterol going to be like? And I'm not really going to do this. It's feedback about a nutrition plan they've all been on. I can have my pork, I can have my bacon and egg for breakfast, and that's very filling, which it will last me until lunchtime. They're talking about the Primal Pacific Eating Plan. It was part of a trial which took place over Christmas where participants were told to eat fewer carbs. Carbs like our staple taro and instead eat more fatty foods. Foods made from, say, coconuts like coconut sauce and rich coconut cream. AUT University researchers Karen Zinn and Mickey Willardin conducted the trial, well aware the high-fat, low-carb diet is controversial in the academic world. Lots of variety, this is what we're yeah. after. Yeah. The interesting yeah, thing is that the concept is actually not new at all. We used to eat in a low carbohydrate, high fat way before that, and we were doing fine. The trial puts one group on a standard nutrition plan and the other on the primal Pacific plan just before Christmas. Possibly not the best time to do a food trial as there were dropouts from both groups. But a key message for the primal Pacific group Eat fat. One message is eat fat but keep carbohydrate and sugar low. Because it was a primal Pacific focus, the emphasis was on coconut products such as you know coconut flesh, coconut milk and, and coconut cream to use within their cooking as one would in the islands. For trial participants, denying themselves some Pacific staples was a huge ask. Every time you cook meat, you expect Tara to go with it. But when they say none of that, that was really, really hard to adjust to because it means, almost for me, it means like I'm denying my heritage. However, the results speak for themselves. I was 110.9 when I first started this, but now I'm 96. Through the Christmas time, because that's the hardest time, because it's the festive season, eating all these different uh, foods. So from that time up to now, I managed to keep my my weight. When I tried it for like two or three days uh, and then weighed myself, oh, I've lost a kilo. And that was like strictly no carbs. And so I thought, okay, this can work. The individual changes we saw were really promising. And it would be really great to take these lessons learned from the focus groups and design another trial. And this is what we are intending to do with a larger group. One other thing researchers have learned in this exercise, eating plans have also got to work in the real world. I think one of the main things that we want to do with Primal Pacific is show that a whole food diet, which is essentially what this is, with a Pacific flavour if you like, is actually achievable at that household level. Because there is no point doing research and recommending people eat this way if they cannot actually afford it and if it's not able to be translated into the household and to take that message out to their community. Thank you.